entire nation. Among the issues discussed is, the re is that relating to our economy, which, as we all know, is going through a difficult patch. Our great concern, our great concern to that guide the operations of all its organs. No, that jump. Of greater concern, may I read this again? I beg your pardon. Of greater concern, To our commanders are the well-founded fears that the lack of unity and commonness of purpose in both party and government was translating into perceptions of inattentiveness to the economy. Open public spurts between high-ranking officials in the party and government, exacerbated by multiple conflicting messages from both the party and government, made the criticisms leveled against us inescapable. Amidst of all this, flagship projects already adopted by government stood stalled or mired in needless controversies. All this now has to stop as we inaugurate a new work culture and pace which will show a strong sense of purpose and commitment to turning around our economy in terms of our policies. Zimasit, government remains committed to improving the social and material conditions, material conditions of the people. Government will soon unveil an un entrepreneurial skills and business development program which will empower and unleash gainful projects at our growth points and rural areas. Fellow Zimbabweans, we are a nation born out of a protracted struggle for national independence. Our roots lie in that epochal struggle whose goals and ideals must guide our present and, stru and structure our future. The tradition of resistance is our collective legacy whose core tenets must be subscribed by all across generations and across times. Indeed, this too was a great concern for our commanders, who themselves were makers of that revolution, and often at very tender ages and at great personal peril. We still have in our various communities veterans of that founding struggle, who might have found the prevailing management of national and party issues quite alienating. This must be corrected without delay, including ensuring that these veterans continue to play central roles in their lives of our nation. We must all recognize that their participation in the war of liberation 
exacted lifelong costs, which whilst hardly repayable, may still be assuaged and ameliorated. In respect of the party and the party issues raised both by the commanders and by the general membership of ZANU-PF, there too stand acknowledged. These two stand acknowledged. They have to be attended to with a great sense of urgency. However, I am aware that as a party of liberation, ZANU-PF has over the years written elaborate rules and procedures that guide the operations of all its organs and personnel. Indeed, the current criticism raised, raised against the command element, but raised <laughs> against it by the command element and some of its members have arisen from a well-founded perception that the party was stretching or even failing in its own rules and procedures. The way forward thus cannot be based on swapping vying cliques that ride roughshod over party, party rules and procedures. There has to be a net return to the guiding principles of our party as enshrined in its constitution, which must apply fairly and equitably in all situations and before all members. The era of victimization and arbitrary decisions must be put behind as so as we all embrace a new ethos predicated on the supreme law of our party and nourished by an abiding sense of camaraderie. To all this must be a general recognition that ZANU-PF, ZANU-PF is a party of traditions and has been served by successive generations who are bound together by shared ideals and values which must continue to reign supreme in our, our nation. Hints of intergeneration intergener conflict must be resolved through a harmonized melding melding of old established players as they embrace and welcome new, new rules, new ones through a well-defined sense of hierarchy and succession. Indeed, all these matters will be discussed and settled at the forthcoming Congress within the framework of a clear roadmap that seeks to resolve once and for all any omissions or contradictions that have affected our party negatively. The Congress is due in a few weeks from now, I will preside over its processes, which must not be prepossessed 
by any acts calculated to undermine it or to compromise the outcomes in the eyes of the public. As I conclude this address, I am aware that many developments have occurred in the party or have been championed and done by individuals in the name of the party. Given the failings of the past and the anger this might have triggered in some quarters, such as developments, such developments are quite understandable. However, we cannot be guided by bitterness or vengefulness, both of which would not make would not make us any better party members or any better Zimbabweans. Our hallowed policy of reconciliation, which we pronounced in 1980 and through which we reached out to those who had occupied and oppressed us for nearly a century, and those we had traded fire with in a, a bitter war, surely cannot be unavailable to our own, to our own, both in the party and in our nation. We must learn to forgive and resolve contradictions, real or perceived, in a comradely Zimbabwean spirit. I am confident that from tonight, our whole nation at all levels gets refocused as we put shoulder to the wheel amidst the promising agricultural season already upon us. Let us all move forward, reminding ourselves of our wartime mantra. I thank you and good night. Sorry. One or two places. I hope we can correct that. Okay, journalist Crystal Orderson joins us now from Cape Town to discuss the speech that we've just heard from President Robert Mugabe. Um, well, what do you make of the speech, Crystal? What stood out for you there? Well, of course, we had hoped that he would announce his resignation, which he didn't in Absolutely. typical um, Mugabe fashion. He has again shown that he's still the leader of ZANU-PF and the leader of Zimbabwe. Now, of course, today we had ZANU-PF meeting and saying that Mugabe has to step down, make place for his vice president, Emerson Manangwagwa. And of course, the entire day we have been waiting for this address where Robert Mugabe was going to tell the nation and Africa that he's going to step down. Instead, he focused on entrepreneurship, knowing that the Zimbabwean economy